Hey friends, so we are down at the farmstead and getting a bale of hay for, I can't wait to introduce you to them, our new herd of Scottish Highlanders down here at the farmstead. And it struck me as I was here in the barn that last year in January of 2022, we had no idea, no concept, like this place wasn't even on our radar. We got it in June. So it's really only been about six months since we've had this place, but like how much has transpired and happened and how much is still going to be happening in the new year. So this part of the barn is actually, this is uh, my brother's hay and we get so much from him. And we typically feed these big round bales. So all of our hay that we had gotten in, we had put down at our place. And so we've just been bringing a bale down here. But the Highlanders, it's been kind of interesting, which I can't wait to show them to you because they are so cute. But it's a, we just have four. So it's a smaller herd. And they are smaller cows all the way around in comparison to our Hereford Angus Cross. And so we were putting out these round bales in the round bale feeder like we do for the other herd, but it takes them longer to go through it. And so with the rain and the snow, it seems like they've just been wasting it because they're just not a large enough herd to go through it fast enough. So we have just been unwrapping this and just taking off, you just kind of unwind it enough to just feed them for the day and feeding them that way. Except I just realized that I got all the way down here and did not bring my knife or any scissors in order to cut the plastic off. And then there's like a out, outer webbing string that you have to get off too. So we're just gonna go ahead and feed them a square bale for today. And note to self, I just need to start carrying some extra knives and different things in the truck. We're only a half mile away, but I still don't wanna drive all the way back to get stuff. So are you ready to meet the girls? So our Scottish Highlanders, we actually, we have three cows. So we've got a five-year-old cow and her three-year-old daughter. So we got them as a pair. And then we have Clara, who is a three-year-old heifer. And she's over there. And it's been interesting watching their dynamics with one another. Because this is Bocephus, who, it's really funny. The bull that we're borrowing is named Bo. My dog is named Bo. But he's the bull and we got him from a couple that is letting us borrow him in a neighboring town. He's actually the tamest and least wild of, of everybody. Um, so it's really funny because typically you think of like, usually the bull is the one that you are keeping as the close of an eye on. And I still don't ever fully turn my back on a bull. I've been like chased before by bulls that people have said were tame and you just never know with a bull, especially with the horns. <laughs> But we are slowly becoming friends, and especially with Clara, um, I can pet her nose and the other ones. But of course, with the horns, when they start to go like this, like I am just very respectful and backing out of the way. But they're, they're really sweet overall, and it's actually been really funny to watch their personalities as they integrate with each other as the herd. Hi, are you gonna come say hello? Yeah, are we gonna be friends? Slightly, we're slightly friends, okay. Yeah. But I'm really excited for it, sorry, I get enamored with him, so I'll just start talking and then I just start to watch them and then I lose my train of thought. But <laughs> we're really excited to introduce them and we brought them down here to the farm stay for one because they are so cute, right? Like, I just wanna hug them and they're not, they don't want my hugs yet. We're working on that. My goal is by next year to be able to hug them, however, I knew that if I thought they were so cute, that if people see pictures of them when they're looking to book the farm stay with us, like if I was looking at two places and one place had these in the pasture that I could sip my coffee in the morning and look at, 
I'd be picking this place. So that was, that was, that was like goal number one or reason number one. But really, uh, the real reason that we wanted to try this herd is because my friend uh, Katie from Millhorn Farms, she's also my partner with the Modern Homesteading Conference, which we'll put a link down below. If you have not snagged tickets to that, you absolutely will want to do that. But Katie raises Scottish Highlanders. And so we've been having like a lot of discussions and the Highlanders, because of the way that their fur is and their fat layers, a Highlander is supposed to have marbling very, very similar to Wagyu beef. Their marbling is different than what you're going to get on, you know, Ingus, Hereford, really any beef cattle breeds that we have here in the U.S. And that's because they've got that, the big shaggy, which is so cute, outer layer of fur. And then they also have an inner layer. And so they don't need to put all of their fat on the outside to stay warm in the winter like you do with your other breeds. So after I heard that, I'm like, oh, I really want to try that type of beef and raise that type of beef. So we did get them for beef cattle. But then the other reason is this 40 acres. So this is just the one field that we have them in right now because this is the only field so far that has really good fencing that we can trust until we can get some more uh, fence lines repaired and bring in some hot wire so that we can actually do some mob grazing and better pasture rotation once the grass starts to grow this spring. Um, but there's also a, quite a bit of brush. So we have brush hogged some of it, but there's actually in the back, uh, literally the part of the back 40 of the 40 acres here, uh, there's a slough and then beyond that there's a field, but it has got a lot of brush that's grown up into it. So it's not even pasture right now. It's really just a brush area. So they are really good foragers and will eat brushy areas where a lot of other breeds won't. They're, they're hardier. So we got them to also see how they'll help us keep like the blackberry vines and some of the other brush down um, and consume that. And they're also supposed to be a little shy. Just don't hoard my truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving them missives here. I normally bring the four-wheeler down, but I wasn't really sure how we were going to be able to film and carry the camera equipment while riding the four-wheeler, so we decided to bring the truck. So they're much more used to the four-wheeler. They're not used to my truck being out in the field with them yet. Um, but we wanted to uh, see how they did on their feed. They're supposed to, because of the way that they have their fur and that they're more forages and hardy, um, not, and they're smaller. So these are all full-grown cows, and in comparison to height, I mean, they look big because they have so much fur, but they are a little bit smaller than our Hereford and Angus uh, cattle. So they're supposed to eat less food and to go through the winter easier than a lot of your other breeds. So I'm really excited. I'm still learning about this breed um, and about them, but for all of those reasons, I'm really excited. However, one of the things that I didn't realize when we were first looking at them is they take a extra year to fully mature. So usually you will butcher, at least we do, we butcher our steers at two years old. And with the Scottish Highlanders, you're gonna wait till they're three years old. And then it's kind of same thing with breeding. Oftentimes, you know, a year to a year and a half, you can breed your heifers of the other breeds with these guys, it's closer to two years old. So from the research that I've done and talking with other people, um, it ends up still equaling out though, even though you are going to be taking them another year because of the way that they don't eat as much um, and the way that they consume and everything, you don't actually have more expense by raising them that additional year before you can actually butcher them um, in comparison to the other breeds. So I'm really excited. Um, like I said, we've got Bocephus here, so everybody should be bred. We'll have them for another three weeks just in case to make sure we hit everybody's heat cycle. Um, but I can't wait for the baby calves. Have you ever seen pictures of the Scottish Highlander calves? Oh my goodness, they look like teddy bears. So yes, once we know that they've all taken and um, you know, of course it'll be nine months before we'll get a baby on the ground, but uh, you can bet your bottom dollar, I will be sharing a ton of pictures and videos once they have their calves. Like I'm already super excited if you can't tell. So these were not on our horizon to raise this year but here we are with the herd and we're starting them out and so it's just been kind of fun to just kind of sit back and look at everything that ended up transpiring I don't know about you guys but like especially with homesteading and I think my personality in general I tend to finish one thing and then want to jump right into the next because there's so much I still want to do and learn and I think that's true of any homesteader like there's always that next thing on your homestead bucket list like we're never done. 
And I don't always take the time to really sit and look at the things that we've accomplished and the things that we're doing. And so I'm trying to be much more intentional about that in life and just really, you know, taking a deep breath and looking at, at what we've done in the year and being in being proud of that and recognizing it before just jumping in to the next thing. So I hope that you do the same. And I also have to say like, part of me is still a little bit, like I come down here and I don't know if you feel like this with homesteading or anything that you're doing in your life, but I'm a little bit like, what did we do still? Like, what did we take on? What have we done? Like, this is gonna be a lot of work But I think sometimes you just have to take those leaps of faith and know that we don't have to have every single thing laid out for us in detail. Like it's good to have a plan and not do things, you know, just like, oh, it's all going to work out and do something stupid. But I think sometimes it's that living in the moment and just walking that faith out and it's just taking that one next step at a time and, and honoring that and just moving forward without having a full everything knowing it's going to work out like you you just have to sometimes take those leaps of faith so I'm also trying to remind myself of that maybe if you bit off more than you think you can chew you might need to hear that too and then also continuing to plan for the future Um, one of the things that we would love to do we're going to see how things go here but you got to see what we found I didn't think I was going to show it on this video but now I just can't help myself so Right now, this probably looks just like a bunch of brush and kind of like a dumping garbage pit, right? Well, it's not. You're not going to believe what we found. So when we first bought this, we did not even know this was here because there was a lot of, we bought it in June. So there was like a lot of briars, a lot of greenery, like all this had leaves on it. It was just kind of covered up and it just looked like it was just like, I don't know, like where they just dumped brush and stuff. But as we started coming out here and and cleaning things up and getting this section of the pasture ready for the Highlanders, this is actually an original cabin site that was here before the house was built. So the house was built in 1916 and we've got a video showing the whole house and walking you through all of that. I'll make sure that we link to it below here. But this, so I don't know how old this is, but this was here before. So it was a one room cabin and you can still see the footings. And of course there's a little bit of lumber left, but not, not a lot, but actually this is, it was like a full, they dug down all the way. It was like a walk-in basement. And then it was just like a run one room cabin um, up above. So this, this is all still here. And the cement is in surprisingly really good shape overall. And so they, after this, you know, rotted, I don't even know how many years ago, this was never here. I've lived here on this road my entire life. So 42 years, this was never standing even in my childhood. So it's been gone for a long time, but they just dumped like, there's like fencing. And as the walls fell in from this place, like you can see old boards with nails and stuff, they just dumped everything in here and just kind of use it like as a garbage pit, but it's just pretty much all wood, like nails and stuff like that. So I would love, and so would my husband, which is key, both in agreement there, right? We would love to shore up the cement and to build an off-grid cabin back here and put in it, put on here, like a a little one-room cabin with a loft um, and like a little porch and stuff and make this a, a separate cabin on the property, either for, you know, like vacation rentals or I don't know, but I think it would be so cool to put a one room completely off-grid cabin back where it originally was well over a hundred years ago when this place was very first established. So anyways, I thought it was super cool. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but it was, I thought it was a really fun find. And as we are dreaming about things for the future, which a lot of us tend to do, right? That a new year, make plans and dreams of things. This is definitely one of them. Now I don't know that this will happen. I highly doubt it will happen this year but I'm hopeful within the next five years that this will be something that we can put in.